Okay, from 7 this Monday morning, good to have you back with us on the SA Morning. You'll see there it is popping up for you, Stage 3 blackouts. There's been additional breakdowns of units uh, overnight, which has now pushed us back into Stage 3. We were meant to be in Stage 2. So Stage 3 till 4 o'clock this afternoon, and then we go back into Stage 4. And that's where we continue our conversation about the National Energy Crisis Committee. It's released its six-month progress update on the implementation of this energy action plan that is meant to end this crisis. There's been progress in removing licensing requirements for generation projects to accelerate private investments, or IPP. The committee also saying another 300 megawatts has been imported through the Southern African Power Pool, and negotiations also underway to secure a further 1,000 megawatts from neighboring countries this year. There's a lot to talk about the neighboring countries. Maybe we'll have time to get to that. But first, just to get reaction, I'm joined by energy analyst, Professor Hartmut Winkler, of course, uh, he is uh, from the University of Johannesburg and is a physicist there. Prof, good to have you with us. So now, first of all, let me just get your thoughts just very quickly on the president yesterday at the uh, Free State ANC conference saying he's wanting ESCOM to hold back on the tariff increase. Good idea or bad idea? Good morning. Yeah, well, I can see why he's doing it. Uh, there's a lot of pressure around the country to, uh, to stop uh, any further increases. Uh, but ultimately, uh, whatever we need to pay for ESCOM is going to come from somewhere, whether it's from the tax base or whether it's from the consumer, it's going to be the same. I think the, the, the main thing is to look at uh, what is going to has happen to ESCOM, uh, how are we going to uh, fund it, uh, and, and where is it going to go? Mm. Two things I'd like to pick up uh, with you, Prof, if you don't mind. Uh, one is uh, this uh, raising or this uh, removal of requirements for IPPs. We'll get there in a moment because we know that's not, that's not going to happen very quickly. What is going to happen quickly is this 300 megawatts uh, from the Southern African uh, power pool one. What is 300 megawatts? What does that mean to South Africa? And now we're hearing a possibility of a further 1,000 megawatts from neighboring countries. Let's imagine in a perfect world we get 1,300 megawatts, Prof. I only got a BA degree. What does that mean to us? Okay, that means essentially just a little bit more than one stage of load shedding. So it helps, but it's, it's not uh, everything. It also depends partly on what kind of power that is, because the problem with megawatts is you're counting a how much are you getting in any particular second. Now, there's some technologies which don't operate for you. Uh, perfect. Uh, the best example is solar doesn't operate at night. So when you talk, for example, of, of a thousand megawatt of solar, ultimately uh, what you're really getting is only about a third of that if you average it over uh, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So uh, it helps, but that's not going to uh, alleviate the load shedding crisis. Well, at least it's better than going backwards, I suppose. It's better than losing 1,300 yes, yes. megawatts, I suppose. Yes. While I've got you, it just occurred to me now, would you be keen to weigh in on this debate? It's our viewer question, Prof, where there's talk now. We heard from Andre de Reiter, the outgoing CEO, that we could see permanent stage two or stage three. Well, we aren't even using the word indefinite anymore. Now we're just using the P word. Now we're just saying permanent. Stage two or stage three. What do you make of that? Because the argument would be, if it's stage two or stage three permanently, at least we can plan our lives. Is this a, is this a way to go? What do you make of it? Yes, yeah, well, ultimately, uh, whatever happens, I think we get in for a year of a lot of load shedding. And even if they... Uh, Calling it a permanent stage two or three is not going to change the situation where occasionally we're going to have to go to stage six or even uh, beyond. I think it's maybe just a way of telling people, look, you are going to be in load shedding basically the whole time. It also allows them to, if by any chance, uh, sometime during the year, they're looking a lot better. They could actually say, OK, for a couple of days, we won't need load shedding. It's going to look back on them. I think it's more of a case of just getting the population ready. Uh, for, what, uh, uh, for what's ahead. Mm. Someone mentioned to me uh, some time ago, it's a bit like Pavlov's dog. Uh, what, we're, what they're doing uh, as ESCOM is getting us used to stage two and stage three, so we'll be happy mm -hmm. with stage two or stage three if we're sitting in stage six, if that <laughs> almost makes sense. It's like we're getting used to sitting in the dark. Uh, the raise or the lifting, I keep saying raising, the lifting of these restrictions for IPPs. Again, we're going to come back to megawatts, aren't we? Imagine in another world, IPPs, we have them all online. Uh, what difference would that make to your understanding? How much would that really put back on the grid? Yes, there again, we're talking of 9,000 megawatts that they say already. I'd, I'd love to see a, a list of that, but what that typically, typically would be is, is 
mainly mines, uh, shopping malls, factories, uh, farms, and so on, uh, asking to generate uh, at least part of their own electricity. So it seems they're all coming on board with that. And uh, if it's as much as 9,000, that's, that's very nice. But ultimately, yes, that's mainly solar installations. So that will account for about three stages of load shedding once it's done. Mm. And typically, these take about 18 months to build. Uh, they're probably, uh, some of them are not quite ready yet. So the only real if, if, uh, benefit of that we're going to see in two years' time. But it, that, that, I think, is probably the best uh, uh, news at the moment. It, it probably is the best news. And as you say, that could equate to stage to a third, to three stages of blackouts, which means right now we're in stage three. We might not have had load shedding today if that mm -hmm. was the case. But again, still two years away. Yeah. As I say goodbye to you, Prof, of everything you would have heard uh, from this committee and from the president the past few days, what's giving you a glimmer of hope? I dare not use the cliche, light at the end of the tunnel, but why not? It's Monday. Let's have some fun. Mm -hmm. uh, what is, uh, what's the one thing you want to still see come out? Yes, there's not much else that's going to happen. I think maybe the best I even heard is that, uh, that Eskom is finally telling us exactly how, uh, what the situation is looking at. And I think that we've heard a lot of talk from especially uh, uh, politicians saying that they can fix this thing in six months. Uh, I think the fact that Eskom is now coming out and saying very clearly we're not going to fix this in, in two years, and that's maybe a best-case scenario, I think that's, uh, that's probably good. I think if we, if we look at the situation realistically, then we can also come up with realistic plans. Oh, Prof, it's always good to speak to you uh, on a Monday morning, just helping us uh, set up the week as well. Energy analyst, Professor Harmut Winkler, uh, physicist from the University of Johannesburg. So some positives, but again, uh, there just isn't a magic wand. Even if you bring on all the IPPs, even if you put all the power back on the grid, as you heard from uh, the good Prof, uh, it's still going to take some time to get that done. Will it make a difference? Yes, of course. 9,000 megawatts is a lot, but it will take some time before we get there. Stage three.